God bless you. Welcome to Transformational Tuesday. Yes, we do indeed praise God for his presence and his power in our lives. And we thank God for all that he has done and all that he has brought us through on this day. God is such an amazing God. He's a wonder working God. He is an awesome God. And for that, we are very, very grateful. God bless you. I see you coming on. Yes, he lives. Didn't we have an awesome Resurrection Day worship experience on this past Sunday? I tell you, my soul is still happy. My heart is still filled with joy over what we experienced in worship at the Convent Avenue Baptist Church. God smiled on us in such an amazing way. And if by chance you're watching and you didn't get a chance to see our Easter worship service, I want to ask you to get on our Facebook page and look it up. It's still there. It is posted there. It's on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. And you can watch uh, Resurrection Sunday worship and share with us as we received a powerful outpouring of God's spirit that was with us. God blessed us and we were all joyful and uh, we were there in large numbers and God just continues uh, to bless us and speak to us. And for that, we are very, very, very grateful. Uh, again, so glad you're joining us for Transformational Tuesday. We'll give people just a few more moments to come on. But in the meantime, please hit that share button and share this with somebody in your circle of friends or text somebody and let somebody know that Transformational Tuesday is on and that we are indeed, we are indeed ready to receive a word from the Lord. My heart is joyful and happy today and we are thankful for that. We are still riding high off of our worship service on Resurrection Sunday, this past Sunday. It was absolutely awesome. And if you haven't seen it yet, I'd encourage you to go to our Facebook page or our YouTube page and watch Resurrection Sunday. It will bless your soul. And then you know what? Even if you were there or even if you have seen it, I think it's a good idea to watch it again. I've watched it uh, a couple of times, especially certain parts of it. And so uh, we're grateful for that and grateful for the move of God and grateful for the Holy Spirit uh, blessing us in such a powerful way. All right, uh, my brothers and my sisters, uh, let me just announce the scriptural passage for tonight, make a, a few brief observations, and then we'll be ready to get into the word of God. We're going to look at Daniel chapter 6, verses 10 through 23. Again, that's Daniel chapter 6, verses 10 through 23. If someone would type that in the chat for me, for the benefit of those who will be watching this later, the scriptural passage is Daniel chapter 6, verses 10 through 23, which we'll be looking at tonight. By way of observation, let me just say that uh, I want to encourage us to continue to be safe. I always say that each and every time. And as you know, on Resurrection Sunday, we were not at full capacity in, in terms of attendance, but we were pretty close. And we were in close quarters. We were close together. Uh, wasn't much social distancing going on in the sanctuary. Uh, we had people on the floor of the sanctuary, people in all three sections of the balcony. It was amazing. But we still have to continue to be safe during this COVID pandemic, and I hope you're doing so. Wearing a mask is uh, still very important. Uh, we are looking at uh, when we might relax that, so to speak, for worship. But as for right now, and I am thankful for those of you who continue to abide by our safety guidelines in terms of wearing a mask during our worship experience. Indeed, God is good and God has blessed us. And I hope and pray that you're continuing to be as safe as you possibly can as you're going throughout your day. Amen, amen, and amen. 
Uh, also, please pray for uh, the families in our church family who are going through times of bereavement and grieving. I ask that you would lift them up and pray for God's peace and God's comfort to be with them and upon them. Pray for one another. Pray for situations that you are aware of. Pray for our world. There's been another, another mass shooting in the country uh, that took place in a bank in Louisville, Kentucky. We're praying for all of the families affected, but I'm to the point now where uh, in addition to praying, we need to start uh, pushing for and passing legislation that controls how these guns get in people's hands. It is unsafe and it is unjust for uh, so many guns out there and auto semi-automatic weapons that are very dangerous to the people of our community for them to just be freely uh, flowing out there in the community. It is unjust, it is unsafe, and we need to begin to push our uh, political uh, representatives to the place where they will pass gun control legislation. It seems like there's always something like this where we're seeing them almost every week now. And my heart is heavy and I'm saddened by that. And it's time for us to take action as a nation regarding gun control and stemming this tide of violence that's going on in the United States of America. So I'm praying about that, but I'm also uh, pushing for those who represent us in halls of government to pass legislation that controls guns and controls helps to control the violence that's going on in our community. And I invite you to do the same, to call or write a letter uh, to our political representatives and let them know just how concerned we are about this and how we demand that there be gun control legislation that is passed. Uh, it is time out for that. Our children even are no longer safe in public places and in schools, and it is just too much. It is out of control, and it is time to uh, pray, yes, but in addition to pray, to begin to exert pressure on our uh, political and governmental represent people who represent us in halls of government, and I invite you to join me in that as well. All right. Daniel chapter 6, verses 10 through 13, and I'm going to read it in the New King James Version. It reads as follows. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. And they went before the king and spoke concerning the king's decree. Have you not signed a decree that every man who petitions any God or man within 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. So they answered and said before the king, that Daniel, who is one of the captives from Judah, does not show regard, show due regard for you, O king, or for the decree that you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. And the king, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men approached the king again and said to the king, Know, O king, that it is the law of the Medes and Persians, that no decree or statute which the king establishes may be changed. So the king gave the command, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, Your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. And then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring 
and with the signets of his lords that the purpose concerning Daniel might not be changed. Now the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting and no musicians were brought before him. Also his sleep went from him. And then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouths so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Now the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no injury whatever was found on him because he believed in his God. Say amen, somebody. Amen. What a story. And for our moments of meditation tonight, I want to talk from the subject, a powerful prayer life, a powerful prayer life. If someone would type that in the chat a powerful prayer life. The longer I walk with God, the more I am convinced that having a meaningful, powerful prayer life is the key to us living life the way God would have us live it. And the key to us living that abundant life that Jesus Christ told us uh, was the reason, one of the reasons, that he came into the world. How many of you know that prayer uh, is linked to power? Give me a thumbs up if you believe that, that, that prayer is linked to power. And so often we do quote many verses in the Bible about prayer, including, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and heal their land. And in the New Testament, we read that the effectual and fervent prayer of a righteous man or person or woman or boy or girl availeth much. Far too often in the lives of Christians and those of us who attend church, prayer is too often an afterthought for many people. It is something that we do kind of when we think about it or we do it before we go to bed or we do it before we eat. But I'm talking about a consistent, uh, intentional prayer life. And I believe that prayer is our link to the power of God. And in this story, Daniel is an excellent example to us about a powerful prayer life. We've talked about Daniel in uh, weeks past, and Daniel was a man of prayer. The text records for us that Daniel prayed three times a day, and he didn't mind people knowing that he was a man of, of prayer. You know, we don't, we should not be ashamed to uh, let the world know that we have a prayer life and that we pray often. Prayer is our key to unlocking the power of God to move in our personal lives, in the lives of our church family, and in the lives of this nation and in this world. Prayer matters. And I want to impress upon you tonight the importance of praying. And uh, the New Testament even goes so far as to say we ought to pray without ceasing. Somebody type that in the chat for me. We should pray without ceasing. 
And while that doesn't mean that we ought to be on our knees in prayer all day, every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it does mean we ought to have a prayerful attitude, a prayerful disposition, and a prayerful approach in our lives. I would hazard to say if we asked people, uh, the average person today, how much time have you spent in prayer today? I wonder what kind of answers we would get. I wonder if there would be some people who would say, I, I haven't prayed today at all. And there may be some who've, who prayed three or four times. Uh, there may have been some who uh, can say, I was prayerful all day long because I really, really needed it. I had that kind of a day. So my brothers and sisters, we learn something very valuable from Daniel. So Daniel was a man of prayer, and you would think that people would think that was okay, that nobody would be bothering him. But yet, here, the king made a decree that no one should uh, call on God or call on any man or petition any man in it for 30 days. And if they did, that they would be uh, thrown in the lion's den. Wow. Uh, crazy prayer <laughs> just because you prayed just because you prayed and so uh, I want to say just at the beginning and the outset and leading into point number one tonight that we ought to have boldness in our prayer lives because Daniel when he hears about the decree he hears about what the king has said and when Daniel hears about it and knows about it, it says he went home, went into his upper room, opened the window so that everybody could see. And he knelt down on his knees and prayed three times for the public to see. He prayed and gave thanks to God as was his custom. Daniel had a boldness in his prayer life. He was unashamed. He was unafraid. And in fact, when people threatened him about his prayer life, he got even bolder and uh, opened his window for everybody to see. And he prayed and did it not just one time, but three times, as was his custom. So I want to leave you with this uh, point number one, that your prayer life, your, it's possible that your prayer life can create trouble for you. Your prayer life can create trouble for you. But I call this good trouble. <laughs> amen, amen. Having a bold, unashamed, unafraid prayer life can create trouble for you, but it's good trouble. If I'm going to get in trouble, I'm going to, I want to get in trouble talking to God, petitioning God, and boldly and unashamedly uh, being a person of prayer. So it creates trouble for Daniel because there's a group that sees him pray, you know, and they decide to tell on Daniel. Uh, and go to the king and say, King, didn't you say nobody's supposed to be praying for 30 days? But that, that Daniel guy, one of the captives from Judah, he's not listening to what you said. Uh, he's not listening to your decree. And he's praying three times a day publicly for everybody to see. The king is not happy about that. Uh, because he, he likes Daniel. He doesn't want Daniel to be in trouble. But then uh, this this group, they hem up, they hem him up, they hem up the king and approach him and say, you know that once you put a decree out there, you, you can't change it. You're not supposed to change it according to the law of the Medes and the Persians. And the king is stuck between a rock and a hard place. His back is up against the wall uh, Daniel is in trouble and the king doesn't want to get in trouble so he has to apply the law evenly and fairly so the king brings the command and um, they bring Daniel to him 
and Daniel gets thrown into the lion's den. Have any of you ever been thrown into a lion's den? Into a hostile place where there were things, circumstances, a people, or situations that were designed to destroy you, to end, to end you, end your life, to bring destruction and suffering and misery to you. Have you ever been thrown into the lion's den of life? I hazard to say that some of you have been. You, you know what the lion's den mean. It may not have been a literal physical lion, but it may have been an emotional lion. It may be a lion that has to do with the criminal justice system. It may be a lion that has to do with uh, addiction or temptation, or your job might feel like a lion's den sometimes. The church can feel like a lion's den sometimes. Have you ever faced a lion's den? Well, we learned from Daniel today that a powerful prayer life can help you survive your lion's dens in life. And I'm not sure who I'm talking to tonight. I'm not sure who this is for or who's going to watch this in the future. But I want you to know that your prayer life, your prayer life uh, is what you need whenever you have to go into a lion's den. So this leads me to point number two. The king spoke to Daniel and said, he, Daniel gets thrown into the lion's den and the king speaks to him from uh, outside the lion's den. And the king says, look at this in verse 16. The king says to Daniel, your God whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Now, I don't think that the king is saying that to try to be sarcastic or funny or to make fun of Daniel. I believe the king is sincere about that because he has, he knows how Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego have been serving God and how they've been standing for God. And the king who made the decree has faith in God because of Daniel's commitment to prayer that he has seen and that other people have seen. That brings me to point number two. Your prayer life can inspire faith in others. Your prayer life can inspire faith in others and it, it can inspire faith in uh, people, other people of God who believe in God as well. And it can inspire faith in people who might be on the fringe and not really committed to God. But if, if, if you have a prayer life and you're sincere and you're committed to it and you're consistent with it, your prayer life can inspire faith in others. And it might be someone that you see uh, each and every day, or it might be someone in a high position or in a position of responsibility or authority. But Daniel's prayer life had an impact on the king, so much so that the king says, your God whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Now notice the king said, your God. King didn't say, our God. <laughs> king didn't say, my God. He said to Daniel, your God whom you serve continually, continually, he will deliver you. That's somebody who is not yet a believer in God, but who is inspired and touched by the prayer life of this man named Daniel. What a powerful, powerful testimony that our prayer lives can touch unbelievers. Our prayer lives can make a difference. If you got someone in your family who's not a believer, let them see your prayer life. Your prayer life just might touch them. If you have coworkers or people around you that are not all that serious about God or not a believer, let them see your prayer life. Your prayer life might just inspire them to make statements and to begin to know 
that God is real. So Daniel is thrown in the lion's den and uh, he, uh, the king is troubled by this. This is how I know that Daniel had made an impact on him. The king is troubled by this. He spent the night fasting. He didn't have any musicians come and play music for him. He couldn't sleep that night because uh, he's hemmed up. He had to continue to enforce the decree. But yet he makes this statement that the, the God of Daniel could deliver Daniel. And then it says that the king rose up early in the morning and went in haste to the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried out with a, a sorrowful voice, hoping, hoping, wishing that he's going to hear Daniel reply to him. He cries out with a voice and he says, Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, here, there it is again, your God, not my God, not our God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? That's a question. And you know, brothers and sisters, that people, when they see us pray, they question whether or not our faith is real, whether or not God is real, and whether or not we really believe what we've been praying. And look at what happens. Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouths so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. And the king is glad about that. He is happy. And they, he commands Daniel to be brought up out of the lion's den. And there's not even a scratch on Daniel. No injury whatsoever is found on him because Daniel was not only a man of prayer, but Daniel believed what he prayed. He believed in God. That brings me to the third and final point tonight, that your prayer life can lead to your deliverance. See, I want somebody to know, and I talked about lion's dens of life earlier, that sometimes you may have to go into the lion's den. You may have to go through the lion's den. Uh, we would all love it if God would keep us away from the lion's dens and just take us in a different direction. But sometimes, kind of like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego having to go into the fiery furnace, sometimes we have to go into the lion's den. But I want you to know this. If you have to go into the lion's den, go with God, go with your faith, and know that God will be with you. Point three, yes, your prayer life can lead to your deliverance. And how does God deliver you? How did he deliver Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They had to go into the fire, but the fire had no power and no effect on them. Daniel had to go into the lion's den, but God sent an angel and shut the lion's mouths so that they could not hurt him. They couldn't even scratch him. They couldn't do anything to Daniel. What a powerful story this is. And I want to encourage you tonight and let you know that if you're in the midst of the lion's den and you're praying about it and talking to God about it, God can take care of you and all the lions. And, and I want to put the emphasis there. It's not just one lion. It's lions. It's plural, more than one. God can shut the lion's mouths. Somebody please type that in the chat. That's a powerful and provocative point. God can shut the lion's, plural, mouths, plural. God can shut lion's mouths. And my prayer uh, for you and for all of us is that God will shut lion's mouths in our lives. I'm praying, I, I'm praying every day that God will shut 
the mouths of lions, that he will close their mouths so that they can do no harm. They're, they're there, but they can't do anything to you because God is a deliverer. God is a protector. God is a preserver and God is a provider. So a powerful prayer life, yes, it can create trouble, but it's good trouble. Your prayer life can also inspire faith in others, even non-believers. And your prayer life can also lead to your deliverance because God can close the mouths. He can shut the mouths of lions. And I believe that if we were able to testify, all of you would be able to uh, talk about a lion's den that you read through or that you're even in right now. And God is shutting the mouth of the lion. Everybody thought that Daniel was done. <laughs> that he was going to be a goner, that he was, that that was it, that he wasn't going to make it. And uh, the king even questioned if Daniel would be able to survive overnight in a den of lions. But you and I are witnesses. You can survive in a lion's den, not just overnight, but for days, weeks, months, years, in some instances, a lifetime, because God has the power to shut a lion's mouth. So don't be afraid of the lions. Lions, uh, the lion's ability to destroy you is limited by God's power to shut their mouths. My brothers and my sisters, stand on the promises of God and be real with God and have a relevant, powerful prayer life Prayer can not only change things, prayer can change people, and prayer can change what a lion can do to you. Trust in God. Amen. Let me pray with you. Most gracious and heavenly God, our Father, Lord, thank you for this word and thank you for uh, the privilege of prayer. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to commune with you, to talk with you, to communicate with you, and then to hear from you and to see your work and your blessings. Continue to watch over us and take care of us. And dear God, as we get in good trouble, uh, my brothers, uh, dear God, please continue uh, to take care of us, knowing that sometimes prayer might get us in trouble. I pray, dear God, now uh, for your people, for all of us, that our prayer lives would become an inspiration to others and that even non-believers would come to see you and know that you are able and that you can deliver. I pray, dear God, for your deliverance to be in the lives of your people who are either facing an impending lion's den or in the midst of a lion's den, even right now. Go with us now. Continue to guide us and direct us and keep us. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, that's Transformational Tuesday for tonight. Um, as you could probably tell, I'm still bubbling over from the worship experience on this past Sunday. And this word really blessed me. And I've tried to share with you uh, out of the overflow that's in my heart regarding this word. I hope and pray I said something that encouraged you and strengthened you for your journey. Uh, but let me know what you think in the comments. Write, write down what touched you, what, what transformed you, what made a difference. Let me know in the comments. Uh, your comments are very important and I'm very appreciative of them. If you know someone that this word might have might help, someone who's in the lion's den that needs to be encouraged, send it to them or tell them to check out the Convent Avenue Baptist Church Facebook page and or YouTube channel so that they can um, hear this word and be blessed by it. 
I do hope and pray, dear God, that you, uh, brothers and sisters, that you would be encouraged, that you would know that God can be with you and take care of you even in those lion's dens of life. Um, once again, this has been Transformational Tuesday. I'm Pastor Jesse Williams, Senior Pastor at the Convent Avenue Baptist Church in Harlem, New York. This Transformational Tuesday, as all Transformational Tuesdays and worship services, will be posted to the church's Facebook page and will also you'll also be able to find it on the YouTube channel after it is posted there. Uh, but my brothers and sisters, I pray God's richest blessings upon you. May grace and peace be upon your home and your family and your loved ones. And I ask and pray uh, and pray to God that the Lord continues to take care of you and that God will shut the lion's mouths that are around you. Take care. God bless. Peace.